Hello, and welcome to the pilot episode of a new series on the coding train. Choo choo! Don't hit my train whistle called Coding in the Cabana. Here I am, seated in the cabana. I've got a camera here, I've got a camera here, and what I'm going to attempt to tackle for you today is something known as the Mora Rose. I don't know if that really worked. I made a lot of scratching sounds. All right, so I have before on this channel um, made a coding challenge. In fact, I believe I have it right over here. Uh, coding challenge number 55, mathematical rose patterns. And this is something I do quite often. I take this idea of our Cartesian plane. <laughs> Let's try the pink marker. Why don't we? And uh, if we have a point that's at like an X location and we have a point that's at a y, oops, at a Y location, and I think of this as X, Y, I can also think of this point as a distance from the center, a radius, and an angle. Um, that's known as a polar coordinate. And of course, I have all these videos about polar coordinates. I have a song about polar coordinates. I didn't make it, but somebody made it using my voice. And uh, it's, a, it's a huge topic. Many mathematical patterns and algorithmic art uh, emanates from thinking in terms of polar coordinates rather than Cartesian coordinates. So what is a borrow rose? So this idea was actually first suggested <laughs> in July of 2016, which is uh, over three years ago, amazingly enough, by Ruby Childs, um, linking to both star rose pattern and Mora rose pattern. Ooh, look at this. Oh, we're going to have to do this. <laughs> I've been doing the Mora rose today, but look at this one. Wow. We're going we're to have to come back to the star, star rose. And look at these Mora rose patterns. So here we are. This is the code from... Uh, coding challenge number 55, mathematical roses. And this is demonstrating uh, creating a rose pattern with two parameters, uh, two variables really, D and N. Right? These sliders are somehow tied to, are tied to those variables. And as I change the values, we see different uh, polar roses. And here's a very, very simple one. So this is an example of a uh, rose or rhodonia curve. Uh, a sinusoid plotted in polar coordinates. And we can see, look at these are a variety of different patterns you can take, get with this very simple idea. The idea being that uh, we want to move an angle, right? Right here, an angle again along a path, a circular path all the way around. And as we're doing that, the radius is going to change. So if the radius is going in, um, you know, I can get sort of patterns like that. That was the worst drawing ever. I'm so sorry. I'm not used to this chalkboard. Not that I draw well anyway. A Mora rose um, does a bit more. Um, it's, it consists of 360 lines successively connecting the above 360 points. So we've got a little bit more going on. We've got this polar coordinate at sign of n times k. It's kind of like we had before comma k. So this being the radius, this being the angle, and the angle is 0, d, 2d, 3d, and d is a, per, a variable in the system. So I think I kind of understand it. So n, the two values are n and d. And k is just indicating this iteration that's happening. So let's see if I can recreate this pattern right here. Ooh. So I could start with this code. I'm going to kind of start over. Um, just to kind of do the whole thing from a, a blank P5 sketch. So let's, um, let's just get that polar um, circular path to start with. So I'm going to say stroke 255. I'm going to translate to the uh, middle. Um, I'm going to, by the way, I had some beautiful roses in the garden out there. I'll show you some footage from a, that I took a week ago. They're not there anymore, but that's kind of inspired me to do this idea. Uh, stroke 255. Um, uh, for uh, let, oh no, for let a equal zero, a, uh, a is less than two, uh, <laughs> what am I using a zero? Two pi, uh, a plus plus. And then x equals r times cosine of the angle, y equals r times sine of the angle. Um, if I have an r, let's just say r is for right now uh, 150. Um, and let's use angle mode degrees. Let's just be simple um, and, and, and set the angle mode to degrees. Most computer graphics systems treat angles um, uh, by default in the measurement of radians, the unit of measurement radians, and a lot of my videos do that. But P5 allows you to say degrees. And since the Wikipedia page has different patterns with the, de the, amount, the angle in degrees, this might be more helpful to us. So now if I say um, begin shape, 
uh, end shape. This allows me to create a closed path. I could even put close down here. I don't know if I need that. Um, I want to say no fill. I don't want to fill, fill up the path. And then what do I want to say? A vertex. So this is the start, uh, probably similar to coding, that previous coding challenge. Let me run this. <laughs> I don't see anything. Because who knows? Let's change the background. Let's put on auto refresh for right now. Uh, uh. A plus plus. Oh, well, if I'm thinking in terms of radians, right? Radians all the way around the circle once is 2 pi. But in degrees, it should be 360 degrees. So now, there we go. There's our circle. So this is a good start. Now, I think if I just go back to the Wikipedia page and look at the formula, I basically want to replace how this loop is working and how I'm calculating the radius and the angle. So let's see if I can understand this. So if I come back here, k, uh, so it looks like I can do k going from 0 to 360. And maybe technically I actually want to go to 361. So let's make this loop k. Uh, I think this is going to be, uh, I think this is going to work pretty quickly. So that's k. Then the angle is n times k. What's n? Oh, n is, um, and k is this, is, oh, I need a d. Sorry. Ah. OK, <laughs> I've got this. So this is not actually k. Let's just call this i. There is no uh, indication. I, I, I is standing in for 0, 1, 2, 3. So I need a parameter n. Where are the, uh, where, what are the things? Oh, right here. n is 2, d is 29. So all right, let's go back to the code. Let's actually put those on the top. Let n equal 2, let d equal 29. There we go. This is going to make my life a lot easier. Um, and so now what I want to say is k, k equals i times d, OK? k equals i times d. And then r, sorry, r is sine, time, sine of n times k. Uh, r is sine of n times k. OK, and then the angle, the angle is just k. So I can just change this to k. And ah, I believe if I zoom in right over here, there's the more rose pattern. But it's so tiny, I need to expand it out. So one thing I'm just sort of curious to do is I could try saying something like scale. And we can start to see it's, I'm sort of like using scale to grow it. Um, but the line is so thick, the line thickness, oh, there you are, the line thickness grows with the scale function. So more likely I want to, um, I could think about the stroke weight, but really what I want to do here, I think, is just expand out R and by like 150. And there we go. <coughs> this looks like exactly like this Mora Rose pattern. And in theory, if I were to just say things like n equals 6, uh, d equals 71, um, n equals 6, d equals 71, boom, I've got this pattern, which looks precisely like the pattern in, on the Wikipedia page. Great, right? look, we did the more rows, ding, train whistle, all that stuff. <laughs> um, let's add a few more things to this sketch. One is, I like the way these visualizations show the plain sinusoidal pattern, if I'm saying that correctly, along with the more rows in different colors. So I think the way that I would do that is by just saying, let me add a second pass. And I think the difference here is if k is just i. Well, I can't see because I need a different color. Uh, let's make it blue. Yeah, and uh, stroke weight 2. Make it a little brighter uh, with some alpha, maybe, and make the stroke weight 4. And then this should just have a stroke weight of 1. All right, so now we're kind of seeing, and I guess I don't, maybe the, I don't want the alpha there. We're sort of seeing, um, we can see the original. So this is the pattern that I did, I believe, in the first Mathematical Roses video. Um, and it's just, in, the K is just the actual angle. So I'm going around the polar path one time from I to 360. And I think I don't need this close here because that's what I have 361. Um, but the difference is the Mora rose has a multiplier for um, 
a multiplier for that angle itself, k. And so it kind of, it, there's this extra like layering thing that's happening as the lines connect across a further distance. I, I don't know if that explanation made a lot of sense. Um, but you know, you could imagine, right, if I were to make d, I know how we could do that. Ah, I know how we could demonstrate this really well. Uh, d slider, not d snider. Uh, d slider equals a slider that um, has a range between, let's say, like 1 and 180. I'm just sort of making that up. And let's start at 1. Um, and then actually, the value of d should be a d slider dot value. So now we don't see it. And if I start to increase it, you can see the, the pattern starting to emerge there. Um, and based on, you know, if I get all the way up to, whoa, 100. So I guess there was sort of a sweet spot in there, which was uh, 71. Um, all right, so that's pretty interesting. And now you could imagine um, I could also add a, make a slider for n. I kind of like doing things, however, um, maybe a little bit more automatically. So I think you could use Perlin noise to adjust to n and d. Um, some open simplex noise you could use. You could try uh, using like a sine wave itself to oscillate those values. I might try doing something like just setting them at zero. Um, and, and then uh, what I would do here in draw is do something like n plus equals 0 0.01 and d plus equals 0 0.01. Let's just see what happens there. Whoa! And we start to see something happen there, which is pretty interesting. And maybe uh, what I want to do is have D go up a little bit faster. I don't know why. I'm thinking that's meaningful. But you can imagine. So I'm not doing this without with any thought. But this you could imagine creating some type of interactive installation, creating patterns. I mean, the numbers are just going to grow really high, and it's going to probably go a little bit crazy. But this is fun and interesting and I think quite pretty. And we made something. Uh, we're sitting here in a cabana with no electricity. We, I am. I've got multiple cameras. I've got like a chalkboard. There's a garden out there. It's really time for me to water the plants. So that's what I'm going to do next. All right, thanks so much for watching this new experiment of mine, coding in the cabana. Uh, I don't know how it, this went, um, and if this is going to be as useful, more useful, better, worse than the standard live streaming videos I do. Um, but please let me know uh, in the comments. Uh, gardening tips are welcome, very welcome. I don't know what to do once it becomes winter. All right, goodbye. Thank you. I don't have a saying. I need a sign-off saying. Choo-choo, I suppose is my sign-off saying. All right, I'm finished watering these plants. Enjoy.